everything of value ever found in Africa was brought there by the Hermitics, allegedly a branch of the Caucasian race. Were the original inhabitants of Africa white? Now this obviously flies in the face of everything we know about the origins of humanity. That being that humans evolved in Africa with dark skin and as they began to venture out and populate the world, their skin tone adapted more to their new environments, generally becoming lighter. Well, in his TEDx talk, Michael Robinson, who's a historian and professor, describes how he started to become aware of lots of stories of white tribes that had been discovered all over the world, from New Zealand to Asia to South America, and of course, Africa. So to focus on Africa then, in the 1870s, the explorer Henry Morton Stanley visited Lake Victoria, which sort of sits between Uganda, Kenya, and Tanzania. And he was there in search of the source of the river Nile, something that there's never really been any consensus about. Whilst he was there, he had a group of soldiers with him who were basically his protection. And he noticed that some of them looked as if they had white skin. It was said that this particular tribe of white soldiers were from somewhere off in the distance, up in the mountains. Now, I just want to point out at this stage that Michael Robinson's explanation for this is that most likely they weren't actually a white tribe at all, but more likely just a more light-skinned people than Henry Morton Stanley was expecting to see. But he described them as white and word was sent back home. But he needed some way of explaining, almost rationalizing what it was that he had seen, ultimately trying to find an answer to the question of how these groups of white people ended up in some of the most remote parts of Africa. Well, this is where he turned to the story of Noah. Of course, according to the Bible, Noah built an ark that he would use to save two of each species from the flood, or seven of each depending on the animal. But after the flood, these animals would all need to be used to repopulate the earth. And of course, humans would need to do their bit too. So Noah gave that job to three of his sons, Sem, Japheth and Ham. In particular, it was Ham's job to repopulate Africa. And of course, because pretty much everyone in the Bible is seen as white, particularly through a European lens, these new white tribes that had been found in Africa were very quickly seen as the direct descendants of Ham, and they became known as the Hamites, hence this theory being dubbed the Hamitic Hypothesis. In fact, Ham's descendants being the original inhabitants of Africa was a very popular belief way back in the Middle Ages, so at least 400 years before Henry Morton Stanley. But the notion of race wasn't something that was particularly important to them back then. It only became relevant once Stanley began to connect the dots. So how did this change the view of Africa? Well, by this point, transatlantic slavery was technically over. But just a few years after Stanley's trip, we see the official start of colonialism, which went from around 1884 up until about 1914. So the general vibe of white supremacy in that black people were inferior to white people was very well established and is obviously one that drove colonialism at its heart. But this idea of the Hermetic hypothesis only encouraged it. The notion that white people were the original inhabitants of Africa essentially meant that white Europeans basically had the right to go there and do whatever they wanted, and thus began the scramble for Africa. This period of just over 30 years, where Africa was essentially seized by Western European powers, colonized and divided amongst them. Michael Robinson then explains that at some point there was a complete switch in thinking. As scientific thought began to catch up with religion, it was then hypothesized that, yes, black people were in fact the original inhabitants of Africa, but that Africa and the world as a whole really must have been the subject of what he calls an invasion of white people. So thousands of years ago, way before colonialism, there was apparently a sudden drive of white exploration and settlement across the world, similar to how early humans set out from Africa, across the Middle East and into Europe and Asia. Now this would explain why all of these white tribes were suddenly being discovered all over the place. So let's work out where we are so far. There are apparently these white people in Africa and we don't know how they got there. Maybe they're the direct descendants of Ham, which yeah, is probably looking a little bit sketchy. Or maybe they're the descendants of ancient invaders. Or maybe they're not even white who knows but this is where it gets and i'm going to be honest pretty unbelievable colonialists would look at some of the amazing architectural achievements in africa the ruins of the city of great zimbabwe and of course the great pyramids in egypt let's be honest one of the things that makes the pyramids so fascinating today is that we can't know for sure exactly how they were built but the europeans knew white people did it the apparent presence of caucasians in africa suddenly provided an explanation as to how these amazing structures were built there's no way black people would have had the intelligence the understanding of materials or even just the ability to make something that amazing, which if you watch my video on Mansa Musa, you'll know is completely untrue. In fact, even if you didn't watch that video, I would hope that you know that that's not true. But now that we know that white people are here, 
and were maybe even here first. It all makes perfect sense. In fact, the actual claim made by the Hermetic Hypothesis is that everything of value ever found in Africa was brought there by the Hermetics, allegedly a branch of the Caucasian race. So now with all of this behind them, you know, whether we're talking about the white Hermetics being in Africa first or the white settlers building the pyramids, great job they did by the way, it gave an excuse to conquer, to almost reclaim what they thought was theirs to begin with. Now whether they actually believed this or whether it was just one of the ways they justified it to themselves, I don't know. But very quickly we see this scramble for Africa taking place. To me, it seems clear they knew very well how much value Africa held intrinsically. There's obviously that famous quote by Leopold II of Belgium, I do not want to miss a chance of getting us a slice of this magnificent African cake. And he famously seized the Congo for Belgium right in the heart of Africa. So it wasn't about reclaiming anything that was rightfully theirs, it was just about greed and status. In a nutshell then, the Hermetic Hypothesis was born out of pre-existing racial prejudice and was used to further the mission of subjugating Africa and Africans. After this, throughout the rest of the 20th century, Africa slowly began to regain its independence from these European powers. But the effects have been long lasting and the perceptions of the continent as uncivilized and lesser is something that has continued to persist into the modern day. And changing those perceptions is of course the point of this channel. So if you're on board, go ahead and hit subscribe. I mentioned Mansa Musa earlier in this video and if you don't know about his incredible story, then I really recommend you go and check that one out next. I'll see you over there.